Hello. 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 Hello.
just up till uh, 1772, the first partition <coughs> of Poland, this kingdom was rather prosperous in this area. Until 1772, the first partition of Poland. So, and what we got then? Austro-Hungarian Empire. And Austro-Hungarian Empire you know, was the most and the most beneficial for the Jewish population. I don't want to speak a lot about this, but I only wanted to say that if we compare Russian Jews in Russia, Rus, and Jews from what we call Poland, you know, uh, Western Ukraine, they were in better conditions. Practically no pogroms, more accesses to their education, and of course the prosperity of their business. And now about Borislav. What brought, what did bring the fame to Borislav? So, of course, it was oil, which was discovered in the first half of the 19th century. So, the first oil rig was built already in 1861. 61, yes. So, and by 1909, already 5% of world oil output, you know, just uh, production was in this area, 5%. So, and if we take like from uh, 1870 up to 1873, the oil rigs grew very, you know, just rapidly. They were just almost planted like seeds from 4,000 up to 12,000. So, and of course it drew population and some people say, look, Jews made a lot of money here. But uh, to tell you the truth, they worked as horses. They were working class people, first of all. Especially there are no facilities, uh, there were no kind of safe measures around, you know. They, it, it was very difficult work and very dangerous work. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, uh, the local people who were involved in this industry realized they need educated people more. So they opened the first oil school, it was called in 1886. Mm -hmm. So, oil mining school was opened in Borislav and already population was growing and growing. If in 1860 there was, they say, thousand people, already in the beginning of the 20th century there were more than 10,000 so, Jewish people. Probably you have heard about, uh, also they say it's a side product of oil. Okay. 
Azoki right. It's a, 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 a Azoki in Polish. Yeah. It's oil. It's oil wax. It's like paraffin. It's a shafa. So this natural mineral wax was also mined in Borislav. Mm -hmm. And probably you heard that the first transatlantic telegraph cable was covered, insulated with... Oh, sorry, <laughs> insulated. Insula insula insulated with it. So up till now, you say... Okay. Atlantic, who, who Mugana, they, they I'll just to mention that in uh, 1872 already uh, the railway station was built in Borislav. Of course, it's facilitated the mining and oil industry. The population of Borislav was up and down because Austrian banks tried to squeeze off the Jewish businessmen out of oil business. So they, uh, in, in a lot of money were put into the industry. So, and they, even there was kind of a law not to take Jewish people even as workers. What happened after uh, Poland uh, came to power back? For Borislav, so Borislav Kehila got its independence. In 1828, they were recognized as a separate Jewish community. Only in 1933, Borislav was recognized as a city. Borislav who cracked here. So the town got its status as a, uh, as a city charter only in, uh, on July 26, 1933. So before there were four small villages with suburbs separately going around, you know. And they decided that because Borislav was in the center and was the largest to compare to that, all these areas became Borislav. So, going further, 1939, uh, Molotov Libetrop Pact. You know what happened? Again, partition of Poland. And this part of, I'm sorry, so that, and what would belong to Poland became part of the Soviet Ukrainian Social Republic. 1941, already the Second World War, but German troops entered Borislav on July 1st, 1941. And here the most tragical history for the Jewish community started. So, there were several actions happened. All in all, they say over 6,000 Jews were killed. I don't want to speak more about this because some of you here are witnesses of these tragedies. So, unfortunately, to our great shame, the local Ukrainians also helped a lot uh, a Nazi with, with this issue. And even now, if you speak to some of them, uh, they say, you know, on a very primitive level, they were rich, we were poor, we didn't want them to be here. In the Britain, they say, they were poor, we were poor, we didn't want them to be The main street of Borislav, um, it, uh, just, it was, of course, the most beautiful, they say, but you will see later in the pictures, and it was inhabited mostly by the Jewish uh, people. There were several synagogues. They, they said there were six synagogues. Now you cannot find uh, one even, even a sign of it. Okay, okay. 
הרחוב הראשי היה מאוד יפה, מאוכלס בעיקר על ידי יהודים. היו שש בתי כנסת, לא נשאר היום זכר לאף אחד. היה בית ספר יהודי, גן ילדים יהודי, לא נשאר זכר. If we speak now even uh, about Jewish population, you can hardly find any information in our Ukrainian books. I brought one and I will show you later. Nothing. <coughs> Completely the history was vanished. So, yes, but after the war, after the liberation, uh, uh, on the 7th of August 1944, the Soviet troops entered Borislav. 200 בנקודת מבט, בסך הכל זה היה תקופה טובה. אבל אם אנחנו מדברים על החברה היהודית, שוב, זה היה מוכנית, כמו שאתם יודעים. אז רק ב-1991, היהודים היו מוכנים להיות מוכנים להיות מוכנים להיות מוכנים. שוב, ככה את הרוסים, חיי יהודים, חיי קהילה יהודית. אם אני מדבר עכשיו, כמו בוריסלאב, You can find different numbers, even in, they were just written, no Jews. Now there is a Jewish community, it's called uh, the revival of the Jewish culture. And the people who came after the war and their children who live now from eastern part, from Russia, so they had all together 30 <laughs> 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 ‫אבל Before the Soviet Union collapsed, the communist authorities uh, had kind of a plan, idea. Why to have these small cities around? Let's make one big city and call it Pre-Karpatia, before Carpathian Mountains. So Borislav was famous for oil, Truskovets, spa center, and Drohobych, a sort of industrial intellectual center. Yeah, uh, okay. Boris, uh, <laughs> Boris had him in the net, like who Drohobych in the Merkaz, the Mishari, the administration. Truskovets, the spa. Spa. So, as far as Truskovets now, it's mostly well-developed city to compare to Borislav and Drohobych, yeah. because spars uh, speak, you know, people mm -hmm. come, it attracts. In one word, the life is going on, but of course you can see only the traces of so to say Jewish life there. Besides, I would like to tell you also, oil is disappearing, so it's depleted. So a lot of oil leaks. So, as uh, Yosef Kitai wrote once, uh, 
uh, characterizing this place that it was the only city in the world where oil was for many years the produce of Jewish entrepreneurship, talent, capital and labor. And this place was called Borsi. <laughs> 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 <laughs>